everybody. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. It is Connor here. If you'd like some bonus content on the One Leads trajectory, go over to the Patreon account if you want some even better short form content that you're probably not going to get on YouTube. Um, head on over to the TikTok account as well. We're going to be posting on there like championship updates. We're going to be posting on their signings, my ratings on certain signings. Then we're going to be speaking about the season that is about to kickstart against Cardiff in, in less than 10 days time. So yeah, let's get on with the news today. So it looks like it looks like Leeds are going to be going into the Nottingham Forest game, which is obviously going to be on Thursday, tomorrow, uh, with probably a very similar lineup to what we saw maybe against Monaco. Things to look out for, probably Cresswell. I'm looking for him to have a, a little bit of a, 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 you know, a much, well, a much better game than he had against Monaco. Um, I thought he was a little bit sloppy in areas. Um, looking at Yelder as well, I wonder if he can almost make that left back spot his own. It doesn't look like Leeds at the minute are steaming towards the left back unless something's going on behind closed doors. You're probably looking at JB having a better game as well next to Ethan Amper doing that defensive midfield role. I'm probably looking at Gelhart being maybe in that 10 at the minute because he's the only profile that we're having that number 10. And it's going to be interesting to see Pat Bamford as well in that in that in that sort of striker role up top because I don't think at this moment in time there is any challenge for Patrick Bamford up top. I think Rutter, we all know this, he's an inside forward, he's a winger. So there's no way he's going to be playing up front. And I think Farker will recognise that. So whether or not he manipulates him on the wing, you know, that's going to be interesting to see. And when we're talking about wingers as well, I mentioned on a tweet not long ago that Elise, and obviously, I mean, Zaha's gone to Galatasaray. Elise has been rumoured to be, to be moving to Chelsea. I said on a tweet about two days ago now that watch this space with Palace because someone like Crescencio Somerville in particular fits their mould of winger absolutely perfectly um, and fits that profile very, very well. And apparently they're weighing up their options now. The only thing for me that would go against the Palace bid for someone like Crescencio Somerville would be his experience right now. Uh, do they want someone who's maybe a little bit more ready-made for the Premier League to replace an Elise, to replace a Zaha? But we know when these players came into Crystal Palace, they weren't the most experienced, you know, Elise, Eze, etc., etc. So it's going to be fascinating to see if they do go down the Crescencio Somerville route, potentially even the Willie Nonto route. And I think this comes back to the conversation that we've all been having about the transfer window. This can shapeshift very, very quickly when it comes to Leeds United. We can think that we're in a good position, but because we're in the championship and we're vulnerable naturally to the bigger clubs coming in for our bigger clubs being, you know, the, the clubs in the Premier League coming for some of our prized assets um, that want to play in the Premier League, want to play in Europe, want to play in, in, in just in the Premier League in general, play against the best players in the world. Leeds are going to, this is going to be a thing until September 6th. And I maybe think this is why the 49ers are stalling a little bit when it comes to signings, when it comes to this, that and the other, because they don't know where they're going to be replacing. You know, we saw a media shoot yesterday uh, with Tyler Adams, with Jack Harrison, with all your favourite players there. I think I'm just a little bit tentative when it comes to that. I, I'm not reading too much into that because for a fact, you know, Max Verbal was going to be draped over the stadium. He was the, the he was talking last week, essentially. Someone said to me on Twitter, he didn't say that he was staying, but come on, read between the lines. He pretty much said he was staying at Leeds. He wants to fight in the championship for Leeds. And then he's gone three days later. So... I don't really believe in loyalty in football. I think there's no sentiment attached, especially, you know, when you don't have the Calvin Phillipses of this world who were born and bred in Leeds. I don't, and, and still, you know, he moved on, which, you know, he obviously would have moved on, but he did, you know, he, he deserved it at that moment in time, but he needed a bigger, bigger project in his career. But the point being, everyone, I don't think sentiment and loyalty is a thing in football. So, I still think up until the 6th of September, Leeds are going to be vulnerable to losing a Nonto, a Sinistera, a Somerville, a, you know, a player, the players of that ilk. So yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how Leeds go about it. Because I think at the minute, the 49ers are trying to play chess. You know, it's like, well, what do we do? Do we just invest in the positions that we know need investing in? Um, or do we, do we go for players who potentially, you know, we, we know maybe certain players are going to get interest throughout the remainder of the transfer window. Do we just bring in profiles, i.e., let's say if we lose Nonto, um, do we bring in another winger just to compensate that? You know, it's it, it's very, they're going to have to go about it in a very um, strategic way, I think, and that's maybe where they're finding it a little bit difficult. Yoel, Yoel Perot, uh, we're speaking about him a lot. 
And, you know, I said in a tweet the other day that it's going to be, for me, it's going to be, if it is us, Southampton or Leicester to go in for him, that potentially is a league winning move just on the basis that this kid um, is, has got a good ratio in the championship. He's used to the championship. He's got a lot of very decent attributes. Um, and if he's, you know, averaging out at, what, 17, 16, 17 goals a season um, and plus in, in sort of a poor Swansea side, what, what's he maybe going to do at a Leeds United or Leicester or Southampton? So keep your eye on that one. Are there better profiles out there for a striker? For me, yeah, there are. There are better players for Yoel Perot and I've kind of tried to be consistent with that. Um, I was very much, you know, I mentioned not long ago about the Sam Surridge thing. Now, Sam Surridge is not prolific. <laughs> we know he's not. But if we're going with maybe a one up top and we're looking at the striker, maybe aiding a lot of the wingers in our side, then, you know, I sort of looked at a profile like Patrick Bamford and thought Sam Surridge is a younger version of Patrick Bamford. But if we're moving away from that profile of striker, I would not have gone for Sam Surridge. So, yeah, and it was a cheap price, wasn't it? The Athletic were reporting it was going to be two, two million quid, which I think would have suited Leeds. And then we could maybe have got another one. But obviously he moves to Nashville. That moves on. Yeah, it moves on. So... I want to know what you guys think about Pat Bamford. Would you be keeping him? This summer, do you think it's going to be uh, beneficial for him having, you know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, when you've got Somerville, Sinistera, Nonto in the championship, is that going to benefit someone like Pat Bamford or, or is he, or is he done at the minute? I mean, I personally think he's done, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, a report the other day uh, from Phil Hay and the Tom Bogart of the Athletic were suggesting that apparently Leeds wanted to keep hold of Aronson and were trying to convince him to stay at the club, obviously before his move to Union Berlin on loan. The 22-year-old didn't stay at Leeds. We know this. And, and you know, is it, in, a, in a sense, it's a shame, but I don't think it was ever going to be a, a worker for him at Leeds United. I don't think it'll ever be a worker for him in the Premier League. I can't. I could be wrong completely. Well open to that. But, yeah, I personally don't think it'll ever work for him in the Premier League. I just don't think he's got these attributes that are going to be, you know, beneficial and, and are going to aid him. So, yeah, fascinating to see on that one. But yeah, apparently Leeds didn't want to let him go. So we didn't want to let him go. We didn't want to let Verba go. Um, so they're probably the two at the minute where you're looking at and thinking, ooh, you know. Um, apparently they're open to keeping Rocker as well, according to several reports, if you're to believe that. I mean, Rocker in the Championship, I said, I've said to you guys many times, I think he'd have done really well. He'd have been like the Vrancic. And we're looking at replacing these prof, looking at these profiles that Fark has worked with before. And I think the squad at the minute isn't, it's not set up for him. Uh, it's, you know, as much as we're all getting excited for the start of the season, this squad isn't set up at the minute for Daniel Farker. You know, no left back, really, unless you're putting, unless you're classifying Yelder as a left back, which he's probably not by trade. But he can, he can fit there, I guess. You know, it's, it's, it's um, just sort of shoehorning players into certain positions, isn't it? You know, striker. I think we need a striker. Obviously, we need a goalkeeper, which we're going to touch on. Two centre mids. And one of them, maybe, but you know, and then you potentially need a. If if you don't want two centre mids, then you get a centre mid, another centre mid in. But then you're looking at a cam as well. We just don't have a cam, and these are where Farker's done his business before. You know, when he's had he's had these profiles, he's had a thirty goal a season Pookie, um, or a, you know, twenty five to thirty goal a season Pookie. He's had Buendia, who's just been on fire. And I'm not saying you have to get a Buendia, but you have to get a profile similar to him in that cam role. And we just don't have that. And I think it's going to take time. I think what I said earlier about certain players leaving is going to dictate what happens with Leeds. And I do believe as well, we need we need a bit of cash in. I think I think we've known that from the start. I think we need cash in to then, to then go out and buy. And I, th I don't think, and I think that's why you've understood that with Daniel Farker in a lot of his interviews, he's, he's kind of hushed a lot of, external noise but I think he's of the understanding from a lot of his body language that Leeds need more players in you know we need more players in and we've got to be patient you know and it's the right thing to say but you know you read body language you read the room and I think Farker need, knows he needs more players uh, the Mail were claiming yesterday they did a big report on Leeds United and apparently the 49ers are ready to spend 200 million to expand Leeds United's Ellen Road Stadium from the best part of 40,000 to 55,000 um, they were talking about how Tottenham make 5 million plus on a match day and Leeds make a million plus on a match day. I mean, they've had on the season ticket waiting list now, I think they've had 25,000 for about three years, haven't they? So yeah, Leeds would fill out 55,000, but I think, you know, to be able to do that, you'd be, you need to be in the Premier League regularly. So that's when you talk about an aggressive transfer window. I'm, I'm much more bothered about what's going on on the pitch now, because I think on the pitch matters, take care of off the pitch matters as well. 
So, um, and I think we saw that under Bielsa, you know, the more success you have on the pitch, the more success you're going to have off the pitch. So I'm not really entertaining the stadium increase and all this sort of stuff. I'm not really interested in that right now. I want to see Leeds doing the business on the pitch. And when we're discussing uh, things uh, being done on the pitch, it looks like Leeds are close to their next signing. Um, yeah, Caldalo looks to be coming through the door. Uh, obviously, Bournemouth have signed a goalkeeper. I think it's Radu or Raddy. Um, by the way, what some, some terrific signings Iriola's made. Bournemouth have had a terrific window. Absolutely fantastic window. What could have been, eh? Um, very jealous, very envious. But it looks like Leeds are closed in on Carl Darlow. Um, it's all right. Yeah, it's okay. Um, you know, someone who's probably not renowned for, 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 for playing that sort of way uh, in terms of just passing out from the back and... And you know, starting things from that from that keeper role. Um, however, you know, you look at Tim Krull under Farker. He, he he wasn't you know notorious for playing out from the back. He was one of the old school the old school gens where it was you know hoof the ball up the pitch. But Tim Krull obviously had that Dutch style, which was you know naturally playing out from the back anyway, total football and all that sort of stuff, um, which was probably embedded into him as 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 a product of any of any um, Dutch academy. So yeah, maybe he was a little bit more used to it. But Carl Darlo, he's been around the circuit a little bit, hasn't he? I think he was on loan at Hull last season. Um, yeah, saw a little compilation of him at Hull. It was, it was okay. It was all right. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in terms of his minutes. Is he coming in as a first choice keeper? Is he coming in as a as a backup keeper? Because I don't think we'll sell Melier. To be honest with you, someone was asking me the valuation on Melier, and I think you'd probably get eight million for him potentially. Uh, this window you know if I'm being completely realistic I don't think teams are going to go to 15 to 20 for Melier at all especially after the season he had especially after he was dropped towards the back end of it and you know proper clubs would analyse Melier's Melier's um, you know last 18 months and probably say look he needs a lot of work and, and people need keepers for the here and now Premier League keepers I need to be ready right now at his age um, and need to develop obviously we saw that with the likes of Edison we've seen that with Allison, but you know I think there are a lot. I think there are a lot of better goalkeepers than Elan Mele in the Premier League. I really do, and I don't really see what side he fits in. In um, so yeah, that's obviously going to be a problem when it comes to money because you you know it would really only be the Premier League sides, in my opinion, that would go uh, big bucks for Elan Mele. Eh? Um, but he's an asset at Leeds. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the dynamic between those two because I don't think Carl Dalla would come as an, come in as a number two. However, he might not have another option. He may not have another option. So maybe he's looked at Leeds and thought, well, okay, I don't have Bournemouth anymore. So in that Premier League wage, I'll look at Leeds United and I'll go in there. So maybe he is going to be a number two. It's interesting for me, really, because I, obviously we know, uh, I believe Rob has gone to the, the Middle East, hasn't he? I don't really understand what the difference is between Darlow and... and um, Robles, I guess maybe more championship experience. I think they're both 32 years of age, aren't they? Uh, both similar. And it's going to be interesting to see, like, I mean, could Robles have just continued as number two? He seemed happy to do that. Um, but obviously Robles has now gone. I don't know if there's some contractual dispute there. And maybe it's likely that Darlow does come in as 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 number two. Or there's going to be competition there. Um, but yeah. Yeah, uh, who knows? Who knows, everyone? Do you, well, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think Robbers is going to come in as... Uh, sorry, Dallow's going to come in as number one. Do you think he's going to come in as number two? Uh, but yeah, Leeds close to number two uh, when it comes to signings. Yeah, I'm all right. It's okay. It's an all right signing. I think it was better out there. I think it was worse out there. It's an okay sign. I'm not just going to get massively hyped because he signed for Leeds. It's, it's a decent signing. So it's all right, isn't it? Um, let me know what you think in the comment section below, everyone. Head over to the Patreon, as stated, if you found some bonus content. Have a good one. I'll speak to you in a bit. Cheers.